What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we are jumping into the Invincible Iron Man issue number 10. The big day is finally here. This is the wedding day of Tony Stark and Emma Frost. With Tony Stark being made the Black King of the Hellfire Club. The Hellfire Club was having a party. Fei Long just so happened to be there. Emma Frost also there, but in disguise. When she was about ready to go ahead and take out Fei Long, that's when Tony grabbed her and took her into another room. While they had an argument, Tony trying to stop Emma from just killing him right there on the spot. Fei Long had walked into the room, and with Tony down on his knee after getting kneed in the groin by Emma Frost, by all appearances, it looks like he was about to propose. Having no other option, that is exactly what he does. Does. And so now they must go through with the wedding to keep up appearances. So make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up in prison. We pick up with War Machine. As he makes his way into the yard this evening, one of the guards, they get ready to hand him a phone, letting him know that he's got a call, but Rhodes is unwilling to grab hold of it, at least at first. Concerned that if he touches contraband, that'll have his fingerprints on it and it'll only make things worse for him. But the guard, he hands it to him anyway, saying that you got friends in high places. When he answers, it says hold for Tony Stark. Tony currently at the Hellfire Club. They are having a grand old time, a great party, and then a phone is brought to him. As he answers it, he hears that it is Rhodes. It doesn't take long for them both to recognize that neither called the other. This is when Rhodes starts to get surrounded. Fei Long coming into the room, and he is the one that set all of this up, making Tony listen as Rhodes is about to get beat to death. Tony lets him know that your life is in danger, to get ready to fight. And as the brawl breaks out, at this point, Tony is unable to hold himself back. He goes straight for Fei Long, but before he can reach him, that is when Kingpin steps into play, the new White King, and he stays Tony's hand, letting him know that your arrangements have already been made. This is where we see in prison the arrival of Sandman. Breaking up this brawl very quickly, the kingpin of crime still has his connections. If he wants someone protected in prison, they're gonna be protected. But more than that, there is also the living laser. This is the muscle for Rhodes. The living laser will be his new protection. As long as this guy is right by his side, nothing is going to happen to him. Getting back on the phone, he tells Tony to listen to me. He has been reading the papers. He's up to date on everything that is currently ongoing. And he is telling Tony to win. To win this battle and win I'm out of here. Have a suit ready with some coordinates. This is a war and they are going to win it. With Wilson Fisk asking Tony, do we really need Fei Long still alive? Because as it stands, we could take him out right here, right now. But Tony needs what's inside of his head. And Wilson, he's going to have to get in line because there is a long list of people that want him dead. This is where we have the arrival of our one and only Emma Frost. As she goes in to take out Fei Long herself. Tony grabs hold of her, takes her into the back room. He tries to stop her, but this is when he gets kneed in the groin. Emma taking off her inhibitor ring. He is begging and pleading for her to stop, that she may be able to kill him. But those machines are still out there. He has no idea what has been baked into the Sentinels. He does know from Sync that his countermeasures to Magneto are in there. He needs to know what else. He needs a solution, and this requires engineering. He also needs to learn what his father found outside of this reality. Emma promised to do things right. That is all Tony is asking her to do. He just needs a little more time. This is that moment we saw in the last issue where Fei Long walks in, Tony having the inhibitor ring in hand. Fei Long assumes that he is proposing, and so they go along with it. Putting the ring onto her finger, saying that he thinks he better he better kiss her before it's too late and Fei Long catches on. Emma says to enjoy it, because this will be the first and last time that you may touch me. As the two of them kiss, we pick up a little bit later with Tony and Fei Long. 
Tony is really doing his best to play the part. He even goes to thank Fei Long that he had been stuck in that armor so long pretending to be a hero, when the truth is, he just wants to have a good time. He wants to retire. He had traded one addiction for another, but now he's out here pretending that he's back on the wagon, pretending that he is back to drinking alcohol. When the discussion gets on the soon-to-be wedding, Fei Long does ask if he is invited, and Tony says no. He had almost said yes, but then he realized that Fei Long wouldn't come. He knew that he had to say no for Fei Long to show up. This is when Fei Long goes on to say that you'll never get any real peace until we know what happened to Frost. She escaped in your Iron Man armor. And Tony says that I thought it was obvious at this point. She went up to Mars. Before he took a blowtorch to Mark 70, the black box said that it was on their moon and then it went to Mars. Some kind of teleportation from the moon to Mars. That if Tony was Fei Long, he would be more worried about the mutants starting up a reboot of Mars attacks. This is setting the groundwork for Fei Long and Orcus's demise. But with Tony and Emma heading off, the two of them, they head off to Vegas. They go to Vegas in the hopes that Fei Long will show up to their wedding, the home of shotgun weddings, the shame weddings, and every wedding in between. They did exactly what was expected of them. Dinner, dancing, all the romancing. And then that night, that's when the clothes came off. And that is when the armor went on. With Tony putting on his stealth armor, he picked Vegas not only because of its destination weddings, but because there is something here that he needs. The lab of Zeke Stan. He has come here to rob him blind. Luckily for them, he really wants drones as his protection, which means there were no humans here. Tony is able to smash and grab. What he came for was a machine that builds other machines. With a truck backing up, the truck being driven by Deadpool. Captain America ensuring that they could be trusted. The machine is taken away from this facility. And then Iron Man heading back to the hotel, getting a shower, getting changed. He heads off to the chapel. When he walks inside, he cannot help but gaze at the beauty that is Emma Frost. So gorgeous, so courageous and witty. He knows that this was nothing more than an arrangement, a means to an end. But he didn't need to be a futurist to take one look at that woman and know that Emma Frost was going to break his heart. And man, is he looking forward to it. As the two of them get up to the altar, this is when Fei Long comes into the door. As they prepare to say their vows, Emma takes off the inhibitor ring and she takes Fei Long under her control. They leave the chapel behind and they enter Fei Long's mind. Inside of Fei Long's mind, this is where we see a recording of Howard Stark. Tony gets everything that he needs from Fei Long's photographic memory. Emma downloads everything that she needs on the Sentinels. And this is where Tony goes ahead and he observes what his father is saying his father getting ready to take off. He has found a medal that is not on the periodic table, one that shouldn't exist, and it shouldn't exist because it is outside of their universe. If he is successful in finding this medal, it would change the world. But while they're in Fei Long's head, this is when Fei Long recognizes that they are in his head. He goes to fight back. He does what he can, but Emma Frost, she is too powerful. She quickly puts him back to sleep. He will never remember this encounter. If he ever gets the smallest inclination that Hazel and Emma are the same person. He will get a splitting headache and he will never think about it again. But before they go, she wants a deep dive into his mind. She wants to see who Fei Long is. As they're diving into it, Emma says that your father's theoretical discovery, it sounds a lot like Mysterium. But Tony says to hold that thought. Fei Long has been obsessed with Howard Stark. Tony wants to know who Fei Long's father is. Once they get a glimpse, they see the truth. Fei Long's parents were mutants. He was born without any powers, and so he resented them. He tells the story that his parents abandoned him, but it is quite the opposite. They loved him for who he was, and he hated them for what he was not. But Tony says that we have everything that we need. Fei Long's fate is now in your hands. That it's your call to do what you want in this situation. All Tony asks is to make it look like a stroke. And Emma, she could very easily coerce him into confessing all of his sins. To tell everything he knows and everything that Orcus knows. But she would rather the world know the truth. 
in the right way, because Orcus would just kill him and take him off the table. Today, he gets a stay of execution. He will remember nothing, but they're gonna take him down still. As we get back to everything ongoing, we see the wedding happen. The two of them kiss, and with them now being wed, Mr. and Mrs. Stark. Phalong goes up to Tony and tells him that I want you to reconsider joining the ranks of Orcus. That you could save face. You could even regain a viable role in your old company. Taking this into consideration, we have Emma and we have Tony who head out. As they take off, now Tony is interested in Mysterium. Obviously, Howard Stark has nosed onto it, but he never got his hands on it. It is a metal that is only available to those that can mine it, and that is mutant kind. The metal, it is in a place outside of time and space, what they call the White Hot Room. They were using it as more soft power after the terraforming of Arako. And now Tony is curious on how much of it there might be. If they can get off world, Emma can get as much as he needs. When asked how much he's going to need, Tony says all of it. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. It is official, Emma and Tony, they are wed. Obviously, this is out of convenience, this is out of necessity for the continuation of Mutant Kind. But that isn't even the most revealing part of all of this. Not only is Fei Long's parents mutants, he is just a self-loathing individual because he never got powers and so he is jealous of Mutant Kind. But more than that, Mysterium. It is very likely that we are going to have an Iron Man suit made completely of Mysterium. And who knows, we might even get some Stark Sentinels made out of Mysterium. I find it odd that he doesn't know about Mysterium yet. That he's just learning about it now. Mysterium isn't something that mutants really keep secret. In fact, we have seen them trade it in a great abundance. But setting that to the side, there is a great danger that comes with making an Iron Man suit out of Mysterium. It's a very strong, very powerful metal. The problem is, we have already seen that Tony Stark has lost many suits and all the Stark Sentinels are now built based on his designs. If he is to build suits, there is always the possibility that those suits get taken from him, which means there are only more powerful Iron Man suits now out there in the world. This presents a huge, huge danger. An Iron Man suit alone is very powerful, it is very strong. A Mysterium Iron Man suit is dang near indestructible. And so now moving forward, if Tony builds a suit out of Mysterium, this is a suit that he can never give up. This is a suit he will have to fight to the death to keep safe. There is no someone's taking over my company and they get the patents for it. That they get all my suits. If he builds one out of Mysterium, he will have to ensure that nobody could ever take this away from him. It's going to be very interesting to see in which direction this is all going to go. But there is no doubt that this is the beginning of the end of the war. So let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything that has been going on with the fall of X, go ahead, check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It'll get you completely caught up on everything that is going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to comics every single month. Month. Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. If you're unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.